cards. Uh, you apparently want to talk about gaming and tech, which I do too. That's why you're here, right? That, that's this episode. So what this is, is it is the gaming and tech section, which was taken from the much longer uh, episode known as the Week in Nerddom from the main channel at Generally Nerdy, or you can go check it out over on Rumble as well. But since you're here, let's, uh, without any further ado, get into the gaming and tech news. In gaming and tech today, we are talking about some trailers that have recently come out. We have the final, I believe, Tekken 8 trailer, as well as the announcement from EVO 2023 for their gaming lineup, plus a bit more. So let's jump into it. First up, let's start with follow-ups and corrections. We're following up with, uh, technically it's a follow-up because Facebook, I'm just always going to count as a follow-up. All of the craziness that's going on in most social media, just going to be follow up because we're always keeping tabs on it. Uh, this one very specifically is meta in general, so both Facebook and Instagram, and I believe they own WhatsApp as well, though I don't know how you're going to implement this into WhatsApp. So specifically, Facebook and Instagram are getting the much maligned feature that uh, Elon just rolled out in Twitter not that long ago. And that is that you're going to have to pay them in order to get your official verification badge on that platform, on whichever platform you want to get your verification badge for. So presumably you're going to have to pay them twice if you want verified on both Facebook and Instagram. That could be wrong, though I didn't see anything saying that it wasn't going to, you weren't going to have to pay them twice. I did just see that both the pricing structures are going to be the same. And that pricing structure is very interesting to me. And I didn't realize that uh, uh, Twitter's pricing was similar in that if you are on the regular web client or if you are accessing it through a browser, then you're going to have to pay one fee. And that I believe for Meta is $11.99, so $12. Bucks. Uh, if you are accessing it through iOS, though, very specifically, Specifically, which is a surprising amount of people out there. People, come on, wake up. Apple's not that great. Yeah, but if you're accessing through iOS, it's going to be $14.99. So $15. Bucks. Um, this has been a huge issue. And so from a consumer's point, I understand that because paying to get something that you used to get for free really sucks. From a business standpoint, it kind of makes sense. It definitely makes sense in the case of Elon Musk because he's pretty much doing anything he can to get that company back into the black, uh, which, you know, it seems to be working. Uh, but on this, on the side of Facebook or Meta specifically, um, they're kind of a sinking ship these days too. Everybody wants to focus on how Elon's screwing up over there at Twitter because everything's going south. Everything's going south for tech in general, as far as uh, social media platforms are concerned. They think the only one that's really not hurting as much much is YouTube and some of the, you know, my, more minor like Rumble and so on and so forth. Rumble's making a lot of actually great headway forward. But uh, as far as the major players are concerned, YouTube, I think, is the only one that's not feeling this pinch. But even that, Google has made some significant layoffs. You know, YouTube's parent company has made some significant layoffs in their recent history. So yeah, they're not immune. They're just slightly above the rest. Um, so with Facebook, and Instagram not being super profitable with, you know, their marketing thing getting shut down a lot more frequently and with being uh, brought in front of Congress for many, 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 many issues that they've been having, uh, it seems slightly... It seems like we should have saw this coming, seen this coming, whatever. Uh, it seems like that should have been a thing we saw coming, uh, is that they were going to have to turn to crowdfunding effectively in order to stay in the black. And that's, I don't even think they were in the black uh, in recent history. So yeah, uh, we're going to keep tabs on this, but I don't think it's going away. I also, here's the, here's the other thing I wanted to touch on with this. I don't understand why people are surprised by this. So 
Let me just lay this out in ways that I think everyone is mostly aware of, and that is, uh, these are companies with boards. The board, uh, the 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 people who run the company, so like the CEO, CFO, uh, so on and so forth down that chain, those people's responsibility to the company is effectively their responsibility to make the people on the board money. When you become a certain size, when you become large enough, eventually the return on investment or the, the monetary returns at all, maybe not return on investment directly, but the monetary returns at all become less and less over time because your potential uh, population, your potential user base, I guess I should say, is only so large. So when you get to the point where you're at like 80 to 90% of your potential user base, you have to find other ways of turning a profit because just ads isn't going to do it because ads are going to return the same amount you made last year. And if the point is to make more money year on year, then making the same amount just isn't going to do it. Uh, and if you want to increase by greater uh, percentages than the market would naturally allow without getting more ads, and then if you have more ads, then you're going to lose user base. And, you know, there's a balance there. So what they've done is they've found a way to not have to do more ads and potentially lose less of their user base by charging for theoretically new functionality for the platform. So it doesn't sound like, at least right now, it doesn't sound like they're going to be taking away any general functionality that most of us have already been using, or, or even that most people who aren't running businesses through these platforms, at least, have been using. So, I mean, you're still going to be able to get on, do your, do your groups, do your, you know, your messaging and all that stuff without any issue. Uh, going forward, that very well could change, but it seems like if they take the same route as Twitter, at least, it seems like going forward, uh, they're going to be adding functionality, again, using the Twitter model, they're, they should be, at least, adding functionality to people who are paying for their verification, so you'll have perks for being a verified user, instead of, you know, just not allowing regular users to do what they're already doing. So uh, that's speculation though on my part, and it's a little bit rambly and a little bit muddy because we've been talking about it for far too long, so let's just move on, shall we? All right, next we're talking about, uh, we have trailers. Hey, hey, look at that trailers to talk about. We don't usually have trailers in gaming and tech, but we do this week. And the first one is a new Tekken 8 trailer. This is a Kazuya gameplay trailer. Still, oh, this is not the final. I don't know why I said in the intro to this section that this was the final trailer. I'm confusing it with something else. <laughs> this is not the final trailer because we still have, don't even have a release date yet for Tekken 8, but we do have a Kazuya and almost uh, devil Kazuya uh, trailer here. Uh, I know I'm saying his name funny. I it's how I hear it in my head. So there you go. Um, yeah, I, I I'm I'm stoked. It's Tekken Eight cannot get here fast enough. This is almost going to be enough for me to get a next generation console. This is I'm I'm fairly certain has been confirmed that it will only be on Xbox or maybe even only on PlayStation consoles. But if it's if it's on the Xbox consoles, it will be Xbox Series exclusive or PlayStation 5 exclusive. It will not be on PS4 or uh, the Xbox One. So there you go for that. Uh, next trailer we have comes from Diablo 4. This is a the opening cinematic. It's not even technically a trailer. It's just the opening cinematic has been shared uh, from the game. Uh, the, and also the announcement of beta for Diablo 4. So if you were interested in getting in on the beta, there is an option for you. First up, there is going to be a, a closed beta that takes place March 17th through the 19th, so the weekend of March 17th. Uh, it, you will be able to participate in this closed beta if you have a pre-order. With your pre-order should come access to this closed beta. Uh, I don't know exactly how they're going to get you that access, though if you have a pre-order, 
order, then you should, you know, have some idea. Uh, and then there's going to be a second beta that is open to the general public that runs from March 24th through the 26th. Uh, the game will then release on June 2nd. As far as I can tell, everything is still in line for these dates to happen as they have been planned out. Should anything change, though, we will be talking about it here. That is all we have for trailers. Let's talk about some regular ass news. First up in regular ass news, Blumhouse, the famous horror production studio, is going to be dabbling in games, it would seem. They have made an announcement that they are going to be creating a new gaming studio that is going to focus on, of course, horror-based games, horror-themed games, I should say. Uh, the big thing here is that it is going to be low-budget horror, again, much in line with the way they make movies as well. So uh, the the cap, it would seem, is going to be somewhere around the $10 million mark, which is fairly low, I believe, if I'm remembering this correctly, I believe the last Call of Duty game, uh, Modern Warfare 2, the new one, uh, I believe that the development for that cost somewhere in the neighborhood of like 76 million or something along those lines. Uh, so yeah, 10 million's pretty small. It'll be interesting though to see their contribution to the to this sphere, to the to the gaming sphere, uh, as far as how it's going to affect gaming. Much in the same way, um, it's been interesting to watch their movie development affect the movie scene as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm we'll be keeping tabs on this. Uh, noteworthy here is Zach Wood will be president, and Don Sheckler has been assigned to CFO, i.e., Chief Financial officer. So uh, they apparently have some gaming cred. I didn't really look too too deep into those names just because Blumhouse already is a big enough name. So it'll be worth a watch because of that. Uh, I don't, we don't need to necessarily get into the histories of uh, Zach and Don. So that's what we got on that piece. Let's move next into Evo 2023. Just made the announcement, super stoked about this, just made the announcement of which games are going to be in their, uh, the, the, the tournament this year, which games they're going to host. Most, I guess is most appropriate. So the list is as follows. Street Fighter 6, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, yes, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z Tekken 7, King of Fighters 15, M Melty Blood Type Lumina, I haven't heard of that game, uh, Guilty Gear Strive, which I tried to get in on the beta for that one, and <laughs> I did not pay attention to when the beta was happening. That's my bad. And then, most notably here, is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. That's a little bit of a surprise, because that game is so old, and so that's kind of fueled some rumors about maybe they're working on another Marvel vs. Versus Capcom, and that's not what this means. What this is, is it's going to be the first annual time where they do this. So every Evo going forward is going to have what they call the Evo Throwback Tournament. So an older game is going to get some some time in the sun again in these newer gaming times, which I think is really awesome. I think that's, I think potentially that's going to be incredibly fun to watch because we're going to see some really crazy stuff in the spotlight again. Uh, I'm specifically thinking of like older Tekken games, maybe even go so far back as to do some Virtua Fighter, maybe? <laughs> I could, I would totally watch, I would watch the crap out of that. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, yeah, so very exciting. It is going to be August uh, 4th through the 6th in Las Vegas. If you plan on going, good luck. <laughs> I don't know how you would be, end up getting tickets to such a thing uh, at this point. But uh, if it's a thing that I can figure out between now and the next time we see you, we'll talk about it, sure. Uh, but that's all we have in regular ass news, which only leaves room for... Gaming suggestion. That's right. This week it is a gaming, not a tech suggestion. And the gaming suggestion is Apex Legends. We got some Apex action in on the last live stream. It had been a minute since I played me some Apex. Started to get the hang of it right about the end of the broadcast, but it was a lot of fun either way. And I think it's definitely with this, the new uh, season starting and the new way they're categorizing the legends, I think it is definitely worth a uh, recommend to go check out Apex Legends especially if you haven't for some time, because 
it's a lot more solid than I remember. It's definitely a lot more complicated, but a lot more solid all around. Once again, nerds, that was a short section that comes from a longer video on the main channel, Generally Nerdy, YouTube or Rumble. Take your pick. I'm on both. You can go find it there. You can go find all of the other news there as well including the live episode. We do a live episode roughly once a week, every Friday evening. You can join the conversation live, or you can just leave comments here on this one or any of the other ones you find on the Clips channel. Thank you very much, nerds. We've got other news to discuss in other videos, but while we're getting out of here, don't forget that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.